of Santa Faustina was removed from the cemetery about 30 years before she was canonized. Was there here a particular lo and local devotion for her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since the very moment of her funeral, you know, people, people kind of felt, yeah. those who knew her a little bit at least, they felt that she is special, that she is a saint. Uh, you know, uh, her life was pretty isolated, so she was mainly with the sisters and very few people from outside knew her. Some of our co-workers, you know, lay people mm -hmm. who would work in the garden, in the field, they would know her a little bit. Uh, and, and yeah, they, there were quite a few people who already knew that she is special. Uh, and since the moment of the, her death, people were coming to her grave were asking for her intercession and the graces were given to them so the devotion was very quick very quick mm -hmm. small you know just in the group of people who knew her um, but then you know also her diary um, mm -hmm. because the, the diary was a secret but after her death they started actually speaking about the diary it wasn't a secret anymore they started doing something about the heritage she left so, you know, slowly people started talking. <gasps> she saw Jesus. And then like, oh, everybody started coming to her grave. And inside the congregation. Yeah, the sisters also, they didn't know about her revelations, just the superiors. Mm. Faustina would never say a word to anyone, just the superiors. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because that was, um, that was the, um, the whole idea, like, to keep it um, secret, um, not to make, you know, secret for those who didn't have to know. Just the confessors knew and superiors knew, uh, and they were doing something about the mission, you know, the little mm. steps of going to bishops and, you know, then contacting even the Pope slowly, uh, but first, you know, priests, bishops, and then to the Pope eventually, but that was already after her death. Um, I think, you know, it's very uh, wise when you are having such supernatural experiences with God, to keep it quiet, um, to keep it secret, just for those who need to know. Um, there would be a sensation around Faustina. It would be a crazy, she couldn't live a normal, normal religious life anymore. She would be, you know, taken to places and I can't imagine, we, we wouldn't have St. Faustina if that would be public when she was alive. Pope John Paul II, he found out, Karol Wojtyla, he found out about Faustina when he was a student, a college student. Um, so it was um, during second, the Second World War. Mm -hmm. So it was a few years about after Faustina's death. And he started coming here with his friend uh, from college. And slowly he was getting to know things about her and started having devotion to her, yeah. We don't know precisely when and how it started. Definitely, when he started coming to the chapel, the image of Merciful mm -hmm. Jesus was already there. So he started praying in front of the image, but only then, slowly, getting to know the story behind it. Because oh, yes. it wasn't public mm -hmm. yet. It's, it's very early, it's in the 40s. So, yeah, the, the diary was printed in the 80s. Whoa. So at that time, only pieces, you know, some pieces of the diary were just typed and uh -huh. distributed secretly. I don't know. Again, that's communism uh -huh. time. Uh -huh. After Second World War, you have communism immediately. So, difficult times. It was a long time with communism. Mm -hmm. That's why the, the first diary couldn't be printed in Poland. 
it was the time of communism, so they printed it in uh, United States, the Polish diary, yeah?